I've had four bay houses over the years, or I should say my family has. The happiest times of my life were and still are at the house. Playing with uh, uh, toy boats in the water, um, fishing, clamming. I grew up, I, I, I can remember clamming when I was three, I think. Um, it's still one of my favorite activities. We see things in the bay now that were gone for a really long time. Different species of fish, different um, just marine creatures. So it's clear to me that over in the period, you know, when there was a lot of pollution in the 70s and into the 80s, a lot of different species had either died off or just not felt that the environment was hospitable. So we've seen a lot of um, uh, different, different types of fish and marine life come back. Birds have always been a constant out on the bay, and I'm a rather avid bird watcher, and that's part of one of the reasons why, um, just from a very early age, just watching all the different uh, species that would come, uh, asking my grandfather, what kind of bird is that? What kind of bird? Cormorants. Um, we have swans that come out. We have all kinds of ducks and geese. We have... Um, Oh, the glossy ibis, we have oyster catchers, we have, of course, every type of gull you can think of, terns, barn swallows, we get swallows that frequently nest under the deck of the house. Um, it's just the bird wonderland. We actually had to approach the town of Hempstead, which, you know, is the governing body of these houses, and convince them why we, uh, we had a case to continue them. They really were becoming scarce. And um, myself and another Bay House owner, Barbara Kelbel, and um, Ed Sheehan, who owned a home along with his fire company, got together and started having a dialogue with the commissioner of the town of Hempstead about what can we do to change think the thinking and therefore possibly the law. Uh, concerning the remaining bay houses. But it was a lot of dialogue. It was a lot of research. Um, I felt like we were a bit of a team, Barbara, myself, and Ed, because Barbara did a tremendous amount of research, as did Ed. But what we ended up doing ultimately was drafting a new proposed town law. Actually, I, I do have to take credit for that. I drafted it. Um, with all the language that I thought needed to be in there about the history of the houses and um, presented it to the commissioner. And so the combination of persistence, presenting a case that was credible and logical and having the historical background via Long Island traditions and the, the documentation that had gone on we, I think, had a, a foundation to make a case as to why. They agreed. <laughs> so it was just a wonderful thing. And um, the town of Hempstead recognized the Bay Houses at that time as having historical value, you know, in the maritime history in the town of Hempstead, which they do. And um, my favorite memory is um, was meeting with the commissioners to talk about it, getting some favorable feedback, and then appearing at the hearing where I got to speak and I think the news was there and all that kind of thing, thanking them because it was the meeting in which the commissioners were going to um, approve the, the proposal. Well, the Bay House that we currently have is the culmination of three years of preparation, paperwork, and just planning, lugging materials out, and getting work parties together, very similar to the way the Amish do a barn raising. It was, it was the second house. Um, it was falling into the water, and we uh, decided we needed to do something about it, and we petitioned the town of Hempstead to be able to relocate it. So we got into a very interesting situation so that this house is not so sturdy anymore, it was falling into the water, how do you move this house and keep it intact? And it wasn't really possible, but along with um, the commissioner, we came up with a plan as to how to relocate the house and keep it at least 50% intact. 
Something that was interesting uh, this time around is that we were allowed to drive pilings into the ground before the houses were put on what were called mud sills because we weren't allowed to put pilings in to the marshland. Um, mud sills were simply like four by fours or six by sixes um, that the house sat on with plates underneath it. So it literally the house just sat on the marsh. It was very stable, but it's also the reason why the houses were picked up and you know, moved away during Sandy. The tidal surge just picked it up and sent it you know, going. Um, so we were happy to know that we could do, for whatever reason, the thinking changed that it was okay to drive pilings for the foundation of the house. So that first year was really spent doing that and building the platform and getting all the permits in place prior to actually doing any of that. The second year was framed out and basically closed in. And this is the, this past year has been the third year and um, we were finishing the interior. But it's very much still the same house it was in terms of its configuration, the way it's used, the bunk rooms, uh, the propane. Um, it's, it's still the Bay House, and as the years go by, it'll become even more like it was. These houses really are little gems on the marshland. The houses need to remain there. They are important to the maritime history of the island, and they, to me, and I think a lot of other people, epitomize what's best about Long Island.